The entire incident took less than two minutes. Two officers arrive at the home of Alonzo Bagley just before 11 p.m. In response to a 911 call, his wife made complaints. He was threatening her and her daughter. Hey, what's your name? Alonzo. Hey, can you step out for me? No. What you need? My daughter. I got a daughter. No, no, come on in, sir. He just right. scared the peace. The people next door over there. Let me put my daughter. Sit down. Let me put my daughter. Sit down. Let, the, let her. Hey, come here. Come here. Put my daughter. She can put the dog up. The first officer follows Bagley down the hallway after he says he's going to put his dogs away as his wife continues to yell in the background. Hey, hey! The officer realizes Bagley is heading out the door of a balcony and sees him jump from the second floor to the ground below. The state is investigating. They took several days before releasing this video, but you have a community asking so many questions about the video you're about to see. And I have to warn everyone, it is tough to watch and even tough to listen to because you can hear the officer crying after the shot is fired. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Leroy Truth for Leroy Truth Investigations. And recording the police in the course of their duty shall help us to hold them accountable by shining the light of truth and transparency on their daily activities. Today, another tragedy at the hands of the police. Shoot first and ask questions later is their mantra. They shoot people like they were kids playing cops and robbers, that there are no ramifications when they take their firearm and pull the trigger as they aim it at someone, oftentimes an innocent person, oftentimes a person who poses absolutely no physical threat to themselves or the community. And this is that exactly that type of case, that type of situation. And this cop had done depraved things previously to this occurring. He should have been off the police force. At one point, he chased a person in their car, in his car, at speeds, without his siren or lights on, up to 112 miles an hour. Speed limit was only about 40 miles an hour or so in that area. Once he turned his lights and sirens on, he drove up to 132 miles per hour to chase a criminal. Nay, he was chasing down a person with an illegal exhaust or a loud exhaust. And he wasn't thrown off the police force then. I'll share the video with you. And it is very, very disturbing to watch. However, very important to watch. We need to end this tragedy from happening again and again because the cops have no accountability. That's why I do what I do. That's why I share these videos with you so you can take peaceful action so we can together, we the people, create police reform. The entire incident took less than two minutes. Two officers arrive at the home of Alonzo Bagley just before 11 p.m. In response to a 911 call, his wife made complaints. He was threatening her and her daughter. Hey, what's your name? Alonzo. Hey, can you step out for me? No. What's your name? My daughter. Out? I got a daughter. No, 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 come on in, sir. He just scared right. the peace. The people next door over there. Let me put my daughter. Sit down. Let me put my daughter. Sit down. Let, the, let her. Hey, come here. Come here. Put my daughter. She can put the dog up. The first officer follows Bagley down the hallway after he says he's going to put his dogs away as his wife continues to yell in the background. Hey, hey! The officer realizes Bagley is heading out the door of a balcony and sees him jump from the second floor to the ground below. He then turns back to run through and out of the apartment downstairs to chase after Bagley. Once outside, you hear one officer yell to the other. He went that way, Tom! About five seconds later, you hear a single gunshot. It's been one minute and 25 seconds since officers first knocked on the door. No, dispatch, send EMS right now. Shut fire, shut fire. For the next two minutes, 
You hear the officers distraught and pleading with Bagley to keep breathing and see the two officers administer CPR. Charlie, you good? Come on, dude. Stay with me. Stay with me. Hey, stay with pressure. me. We're pressure. Stay, stay with me, Come man. Come on. Stay with me. Come on. You're good. You're good, bro. Stay you're with good. me. Hey. You're good. Hey, keep breathing. Keep breathing. Stay keep breathing. Stay with me, keep breathing. Stay with me man. Stay with me. Keep breathing. Hey, you're good, man. Keep breathing. Keep breathing, dude. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Dude. Alex, hey, go to go to the front of the building. Go to the front of the building. Wave them down. Wave them down with your flashlight. Come on. And the cop thinks that if he just yells loud enough, that the guy will comply. Even though, unfortunately, he is dying very swiftly. Run, 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 run. Hey, hey, dude. You, hey, you're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. Look at me. Hey, look at me. 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 Hey, wake up. Wake up. Look at me. Look at me. Hey, respond. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wake up. Respond. But he doesn't wake up. Bagley's later pronounced dead at a local hospital. Alexander Tyler, the officer who fired that shot, was arrested today on a charge of negligent homicide. His lawyer says he hopes the body cam footage is thoroughly reviewed for the facts and evidence. Officers are always faced on a day-to-day -day basis with dangerous situations like that. Whoa, 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 stop. Stop, everybody. Hold the presses, hold the presses. Like a dangerous situation like that. It wasn't a fucking dangerous situation, idiot. Apologist for police murder. That's the whole point with this. Cop was trigger happy. Comply or die. He better not get away with it. It's based on a day-to-day -day basis with dangerous situations like that and at times where they have to make split-second decisions where they're in a potential life threatening situation. The mere fact that uh, an argument is being made by the investigator in court that he was unarmed does not necessarily mean he's not a threat to the officer. Bagley's brother, who also viewed the video today. God, this is absolute bullshit. And cops and the police unions, they love to make excuses. He wasn't necessarily a threat. Well, look at the freaking video if you have eyes to see. And you will see that that gentleman did not appear to be a threat. He was running away, and he was unarmed. But the cop was so quick to shoot and ask questions later. Remember that from years ago? Shoot first and ask questions later? That's the cop's mantra, nationally. Bagley's brother, who also viewed the video today, said it wasn't an easy thing to watch. It took me back to being a little brother, watching my older brother take his last breath and that struck everybody in their room incredibly disturbing of course the cops like to shoot first ask questions later comply or die now the cop is begging for the guy to keep breathing and basically to stay alive most likely not because the cop actually cares about that human being he cares about his career about his accountability, if any, his culpability. Now, I'm not saying you should run from the police. And I don't know what happened in the house between the woman, the dog, and this gentleman who was unalived. But running away from the police should never result in the death penalty. And in fact, a cop is supposedly not allowed to shoot someone unless that person fleeing poses a grave threat of bodily harm to the community 
or the cop. And in the video, neither of those things were shown at all. You see, ladies and gentlemen, these things keep happening. And remember, the incidents, the events that are caught on video are only a fraction of what actually occurs in our country. We're talking a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. So if you're upset what you see on CNN, on YouTube, when people like myself cover these critically important stories to hold police accountable, and not just police, the system accountable, the entire system, the judicial system, the supervisors of that cop, the captain, chief, lieutenant, they're all culpable. They're the ones who train them. They're the ones who create the culture of shoot first and ask questions later. And when they get caught, when something like this, either body cam footage comes out, which is what happened here, or a bystander records the police in the course of committing heinous crimes, the chiefs of police and the supervisors, they attempt to make it like that was a rogue cop. Oh, that's not how we train them. No, 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 no. They broke department policy. That's what they say in front of the cameras. Those things would not happen if that wasn't the culture. Because believe me, people don't burp or fart, to put it bluntly, without permission from their superior officers. It's militaristic how the cops are trained. Those things happen because the culture supports those kind of things to happen. I'm going to read the article now. Let's go over more details. The Shreveport, Louisiana police officer charged in the shooting of an unarmed black man earlier this month had twice been suspended from the department without pay record show. Officer Alexander Tyler, 23, served a combined 30 days on suspension, probably paid, also called vacation, in 21 months with the Shreveport Police Department, according to personnel files obtained by CNN. And again, this is a CNN video. I didn't find this, and, and I'm not sharing this extreme situation just to share it, but to help each of you to get so angry that you take action, always non-violent action, of course, but take action and demand from your local politicians that they hold police accountable and create the police reform, which I am proposing to a number of senators in the coming weeks. And also, if you would like to share your voice in that, what you want for police reform, email me now at LeroyTruth247 at gmail.com. That's email... That's LeroyTruth247 at gmail.com. And make sure to subscribe to my channel as well so we can get the word out to even more people. Tyler is currently on administrative leave, probably paid vacation, after being charged with negligent homicide and the February 3rd death of Alonzo Bagley. Sounds like too light of a sentence, personally. Bagley, 43, was shot after Tyler and another officer responded to a domestic disturbance call at an apartment complex, according to Louisiana State Police, which is investigating the encounter. When the officers arrive, Bagley jumped down from an apartment balcony and fled. After a brief foot chase, Tyler shot Bagley, who was later found to be unarmed. Surprise, surprise, state police said. Investigators have released body camera video and a 911 call related to the shooting which happened less than a month after the fatal beating of Tyree Nichols by Memphis officers, which I covered on this channel, by the way, and you could find it in my videos, by Memphis officers during a traffic stop that reignited a national conversation about police use of force against people of color, particularly black Americans. Now, it is not only black Americans that police are doing this to. I have personally been subject to almost being murdered by a cop for doing nothing more than expressing my First Amendment right, actually my Fourth Amendment right, not to give ID. I didn't want to give my ID to a cop who was demanding it when I did nothing wrong. He took a gun out of his holster, pointed it directly next to the temple of my head with his finger on the trigger. I was one-eighth inch of a trigger pull for being murdered for standing up 
for my constitutional rights and your constitutional rights to be secure in our persons. No ID. Show me your papers. I wouldn't do it. And I was willing to sacrifice my life for it if necessary. I did get arrested as well. So I know how this goes down. Continuing. And it's not just black Americans. Again, many black Americans have been murdered by cops and many white Americans and various ages, I mean, various races, because it is a authoritarian problem, an authoritarian problem that cops have above everything else. Tyler's attorney, Du Thompson, told CNN last week he hopes the video is reviewed thoroughly and a decision is made based on facts and evidence. Well, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I saw it with my own eyes. Officers are always faced on a day-to-day basis with dangerous situations like that. Again, as I shared earlier, where was the dangerous situation? This man is running away from the police. I didn't see him pose any threat to a cop who was many, many yards away from him. According to the personnel files, Tyler joined the Shreveport Police Department in May 2021. That was a sad day for humanity. The documents contain redactions of some personal information and four pages of information that was fully redacted. What the fuck? Transparency. Those are our files, not the government's files, not the police's files. In total, the department wrote release more than 450 pages of documents, but leaving out perhaps the four most important video and audio recordings to CNN as part of an open records request. They didn't do that happily, I got to tell you. I'm no fan of CNN by any means, but this, this is actually journalism. This is actual journalism. So good job for you, CNN. Maybe you'll become a, an actual news organization once again. His two suspensions occurred in November 2022 and December 2022, the records show. The November suspension was for conduct that is unbecoming during an incident that occurred in September 2022, according to records. Unbecoming, like maybe he murdered someone else. That's pretty unbecoming. Tyler was suspended without pay for 15 days. Ooh, that was a big one. No pay. The file did not elaborate further. He was again suspended for 15 days in December, but the records did not indicate the reasons. Not okay. We need to know the facts. Stop covering up. Stop the cover up. And see, I don't blame the cop. I blame the police unions. I blame the chief, the captain, the mayor, the lieutenants, the sergeants. They're all complicit in this cover up. They should all be in, in prison. Prior to the suspensions, in February 2022, a personnel action notice was issued and Tyler was transferred to a new area of patrol and shift. The documents don't say what prompted the action. He received a letter of commendation from the department in April 2022. Oh my, this is a winner here. For his work on a shots fired call that led to a drug bust. Of course, the war on drugs is a war on people. And mostly a war on poor people. And many times a war on people of color. A performance review from June 2022 said Tyler displays good judgment, has satisfactory contacts with the public, and noted that he tactically performs well under stress and has been actively taking steps to improve his communication skills under stress and has indeed improved in that area, meaning his communication skills weren't too good. Maybe they were like this. Bam, bam. Please stop or I'll fire. We don't have the details here. Shreveport Police Internal Affairs, also known as Shreveport Police Cover-Up Affairs Unit, later opened an investigation into Tyler after receiving a complaint alleging that on July 23, 2022, he violated department policy related to vehicle pursuits and operation of in-car cameras. Can we say cover-up? That's kind of a theme here, ladies and gentlemen. So what was he doing? Turning the camera off to cover up his illicit and illegal and criminal behavior, as well as state law related to speed limits during a pursuit. The investigation report says Tyler drove up to 140 miles per hour before activating his lights and sirens. I mean, God, this is the story that keeps on giving insanity. He th- I mean, that's depraved. That's Extreme reckless driving. You or I would go to prison for a long time if we did that. He then increased his speeds to a reasonable 
132 miles per hour for three minutes with his lights and sirens on. Well, then it's okay. Probably did this through a freaking school zone. While attempting to pull over a vehicle for, get this, a modified exhaust. God, there is a criminal right there. Modified exhaust. There were lots of victims. It was maybe annoying someone's eardrums a little bit. Was that good judgment, ladies and gentlemen? He should never have been allowed on the streets after that. That was, again, egregiously wrong. For God's sakes. The investigation sergeant said Tyler was driving between 60 to 70 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. So what is that? It sounded like the posted speed limit was about 30 then, right? 30 or 40 miles an hour. During an internal affairs uh, interview with Eternal Affairs, also known as the Eternal Cover-Up Affairs, Tyler said his speeds were excessive and he took accountability for his actions, according to the documents. And then he got like, oh, you're a very bad officer boy. You know, don't do that again. Okay. Okay. Okay, mommy. Okay, daddy. A letter of reprimand. <laughs> That's really got to hurt. A letter of reprimand was issued in October 2022 and Tyler was required to take a defensive driving course. How about this? I don't need to give him a defensive driving course. Just slow the fuck down. <laughs> you know, don't pursue people fast who really didn't do anything wrong. There's no victim there. And he had to ride with a sergeant for a week. So he had to ride with daddy for a week. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Speaking last week after charges against Tyler were announced, Shreveport Police Chief Wayne Smith said, disciplinary wise, I don't know if he talked like that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Disciplinary wise, I would not say he has been a disciplinary issue, or at least not to the point where things would rise on our radar. What the fuck did I just say there? Up to 132 miles an hour or so, for God's sakes. We do have a procedure in place called an early morning system when an officer gets so many incidents. That's brought to our attention. You think that one wouldn't have been DEFCON 5 million and warranted not only booting them off the police force, but also charging him with reckless endangerment of lives? I think a six-year-old would understand that. His history with our department had not reached the level where the early warning system would have picked it up and brought him in front of our radar. God, <laughs> yet it was already in front of the radar. When asked if, by CNN if Tyler had previously been cited for violence toward a suspect, the chief said, to my knowledge, well, only one, I believe. I wouldn't hold me to it closely, but only one comes to mind at this point. You did an interview and didn't know the facts? People who are supposed to be experts on investigating and finding the facts? It is unclear what incident the chief was referring to, and he did not elaborate. Of course, no to cover up. Only one. One is one too many. The personnel files show Taylor had no previous law enforcement experience in the state of Louisiana and had not served in the military before joining the Shreveport Police Department. His highest level of education was high school, according to his files. His IQ was probably in the negative numbers, negative 54 or so. And he probably scored about a two on his SATs. And he probably graduated in the bottom of his class. I don't know these for a facts. I'm just asking questions there. Bagley's family has filed a federal lawsuit against Tyler, seeking more than $10 million in damages. The lawsuit alleges that officers violated Bagley's, that the officer violated Bagley's Fourth Amendment rights. And he also violated the most profoundly sacred human right, which is he took an innocent man's life. What do you do with this? When I create a video for you like this or others in, in our community do, what do you do with it? Don't put your hands up in despair and shake your head. The point of doing these is to create enough momentum and channeled nonviolent anger to demand from our servants, our public servants, police reform. But they have gotten away with this because they have had no accountability. And there could be a million of these stories that are done on CNN, on my channel, and on anyone's channel. 
But unless we actually take action and demand through email, phone calls, some protests as well, that we get our way to protect our, we the people selves, nothing will change. Shreveport, Shreveport, Louisiana, police. Contact them. They're not going to change it by contacting them, but I want you to give them pressure. The mayor of Shreveport. The congressman. Senators. Local politicians. Contact them and demand police reform. This is Leroy Truth. Please subscribe to my channel. Please share my channel. Please like this video and help get the word out so we can get the word out to more people and create the outcome we desire for we the people. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you.